G'day guys, we're back on True Footy for another trade update. And these are gonna be coming increasingly common uh, over the next couple of weeks as the trade stuff really ramps up. We've got two teams left in the competition. And as you can see, now that the prelim final has happened and particularly Port Adelaide has been eliminated, we've seen some stories bob up. And I feel like this is going to be almost daily from this point out. Certainly throughout the trade period, I will be daily. And some interesting stories have broken as well. A lot happening at Port Adelaide in particular. We've got about seven or eight nine players to talk about in this video. Before I get into it, I have noticed that over the last 28 days, there have been 45,000 return viewers on the True Footy YouTube channel. That means somebody who's discovered the channel and then come back to watch more content. 45,000 is a lot more than the amount of subscribers I have. So all I would ask is if you are somebody who is enjoying the content and wants to see more trade, draft, and football content generally, we cover the grand final, we'll be back in 2025. I would really appreciate it if you consider subscribing to the channel and help me grow it to continue to build this towards something being really cool and potentially sustainable as a career. We'll see, but thanks. All right, let's crack in. We, we do have some juicy updates in this particular issue. So one of them to start off with is around the future of Jack Lacocious. Now, he has formally requested a trade to Port Adelaide now. The story of Jack Lacocious is that uh, despite being a, an immensely talented player at the Gold Coast Suns, in my opinion, uh, there was a bit of a drop-off in form this year. Played a little bit out of position. He went back uh, a couple of years ago. He kicked, I think it was last year, he kicked 39 goals as a forward. I think perhaps forward is his best position. Regardless, he's on a fair bit of money there, was apparently given some honest feedback to explore his options at the end of this year. Gold Coast were somewhat happy to keep him, but they're also fairly open to the prospect of him leaving. And I kind of interpret that as Hardwick probably struggling to see what Lukosius can provide in his specific system. Now, Lukosius was linked to a move to South Australia where he is from originally. Both the Crows and Port Adelaide considered contenders. There was also a chance that he was going to go to Victoria and there is going to be a number of clubs on the lookout for a tall forward. However, we do know now he has formally requested a trade to Port Adelaide. So I believe this originally came from Cal Toomey. And he also said that apparently Lukosius is part of Connor Rosie's bridal party. Um, those guys were all drafted the same year, Zach Butters as well. So there's existing relationships there and uh, he's most likely going to get to Port Adelaide. Now, what role does he play at Port Adelaide? Well, I mean, I suppose, you know, I didn't think they really had a need for some tall forwards, but that may be changing soon. So we know that Charlie Dixon, he may have played his last game. The latest update on Charlie Dixon is he's probably less likely than, say, a Travis Boak to sign on for next year and certainly out of favor and out of form. There's also, unfortunately, a little bit of doubt around Todd Marshall. I think he's gone in for brain scans. So, um, you know, perhaps there's a future of Ollie Lord, Georgiatis, Lukosius as their front three. I do really hope that Todd Marshall is okay. And I do think all of those could work together. They're all stylistically different forwards. Getting this done will be a little bit awkward for the power. They've tried it out of a, a couple of drafts in a row that, and therefore they don't hold a first round draft pick this year. So perhaps they could get something done in terms of their first round pick next year, where Gold Coast probably does have an appetite for future first round picks at this stage as well. However, that does lead me to the next story. And Dan Houston has formally told Port Adelaide that he wants to go play in Victoria. So a while back, uh, I mean, the story broke originally, and then there was an update that Dan Houston pretty much verbally committed to staying at Port Adelaide, where he is pretty heavily contracted. So there was no real need for a decision to be made, but he did commit to Port Adelaide and subsequently has changed his mind because in his exit interview, supposedly he's told the club now that he, he would prefer to head back to Victoria, although he does leave the door open by saying that he would be happy to stay as well. My suspicion is when this story kind of broke, perhaps you know there was a, a acceleration of interest from Victorian clubs. We know that uh, Collingwood, Carlton, St Kilda and the Western Bulldogs to different extents have had massive interest in him, although it does say St Kilda have slightly lost interest. So it's worth noting that Dan Houston has not requested a trade to a specific club yet. However, there has been some really strong suggestion that Carlton is the one making moves. And we've seen in the background there, I said in my last video, Carlton have kind of made some Interesting decisions around, you know, not giving Matt always a contract, for instance, and Matthew Kennedy as well told to explore his options. That to me suggests they're making moves to make room for a move for Dan Houston. Now, how this gets done is also messy. The reason it's connected to the Lacocious thing is that you presume that Port Adelaide get a first round draft pick in this year's draft. However, the sticking point is Carlton have also reported to not want to trade that first round pick in this year's draft. So it's also been reported that Carlton are having a look 
at one of Gold Coast's first round picks that they're possibly looking to move into next year. So if they end up with one of those picks, say Carlton trade a future first, get a first rounder from Gold Coast, they can trade that to Port Adelaide. Then Port Adelaide have a draft pick as well. So it's getting a little messy, but I feel like I've covered it off basically what's happening. The next one is around Chad Warner. And I've released a video on this um, yesterday on my True Eagles fan channel. Now, there was a little bit of a suggestion by Will Schofield on the Backchat uh, Studios YouTube channel and the Shelter Footycast specifically, that there is a belief that Chad Warner would be willing to leave Sydney at the end of the season to join one of West Coast or Fremantle if Sydney win the Premiership this year. Now, I'll let you make your own mind up. If you want to be specific about it, the video is literally called, if Sydney win the flag, Chad Warner will go to West Coast. My personal opinion is that there is, this is probably based on some information that Schofield has, that at least from a West Coast perspective, there is belief Chad Warner would leave. That doesn't mean that nothing for a start can change or that that belief is necessarily correct. If you're an Eagles fan, on my True Eagle YouTube channel, I make a video on this topic. And rather than discuss the truth to it, I, I more or less discuss the merits of potentially West Coast going for him because he would be expensive. He is contracted for another year. You'd imagine Fremantle. I know they've got their hands tied up a little bit with Shea Bolton. Do they try and get both? This is going to be a fascinating watch and it all might be irrelevant if Brisbane win the flag this weekend. Let's talk about Sam DeConing. This one is bubbling away a little bit under the surface. We do have a bit of an update I believe John Ralph said this on Fox Footies on the couch that he's being targeted by other clubs. Now, Sam DeConing is a pretty talented key back, in my opinion, premiership player in 2022, but missed out on the prelim team this year. And therefore, there was a suggestion that maybe he is gettable, but I believe he's contracted for one more season. You'd imagine Carlton probably eyeing that situation pretty closely to pair up the De Konings. Probably a good partner for Weedering as well as a bit of a foil down back. However, the update here is that he's pretty much committed to staying at Geelong for one more season. So this one is maybe a watch for 12 months from now. Geelong will probably need to consider you know, how they treat Sam De Koning. I'm not suggesting they play him if he doesn't deserve it, but they will need to consider that if he doesn't get the opportunity, it will affect his trade value. It may affect how willing he is to stay. I would also suggest that in my experience, I wouldn't rule this out happening this year just because trade period can accelerate so fast, not based on any information. We know clubs are interested, and for the time being, he wants to stay at the Cats. A bit more of an update on Harry Perryman. Uh, we still don't know where he is going, um, but I think I said in my last update, we do now know that Collingwood have a serious interest in Harry Perryman. And again, on the couch, John Ralph has said that Collingwood uh, have ramped up their bid to pursue Harry Perryman. And um, I think it's quoted as being said that they really want some help for Nick Dacos. It makes perfect sense for Collingwood to be eyeing the free agency market. If you look at their list, there's a lot of aging players there. They need to be mindful of the transition part. They don't have a first round draft pick this year. Free agency space in general is a great way to recruit talent. And I feel like they're missing a beat if they don't get anyone in this free agency period. So I don't know where they sit in the pecking order for someone like a Harry Perryman. These are the clubs that are meaningfully linked to him. You've got Hawthorne who have been considered the favorite for some time, although Port Adelaide apparently offered a much bigger contract. Those are probably the two. You'd imagine Collingwood may or may not be right in that mix. Are they first? Are they third? Who knows? There was also a suggestion that West Coast are making a play for him. Now, you'd imagine West Coast would be the least attractive of those four options. They're probably yapping at the heels, but we've seen it confirmed that West Coast were going for him. We've also not seen it reported since that West Coast are not interested. They'd be a long shot. You'd imagine it'd be out of one of Hawthorne, Collingwood, or Port Adelaide. Collingwood also have a retention consideration here on the cards with Joe Richards. Joe Richards, I think, debuted this year. I remember him playing really well against West Coast, a VFL recruit, a mature player, and, and showed some really good signs this year, and I was impressed with him as a talent. Now, Port Adelaide apparently some time ago offered him a three-year contract to try and lure him from Collingwood, which would not be an easy task to get a Victorian player from a big club like Collingwood to join Port Adelaide. There must have been some sort of financial incentive you'd think. That's kind of always the case in these situations. It's been reported now, the latest update, that Collingwood have upped their two-year offer to Joe Richards to three. I don't know what other factors are at play here. Is there still a monetary gap between what Port is offering and what Collingwood is offering? You'd think so. You'd think if the offers are the same, you'd think the Victorian guy stays at Collingwood where he got some opportunities this year, but we don't know for sure. The update is that Collingwood have increased their offer, but no real movement yet. We had another formal trade request, I believe. This is reported by Cal Toomey that Ivan Soldo has requested a trade back to Victoria after just one season at Port Adelaide, continuing a new little trend of Rucks spending one year at a, at a new club. But apparently he's gotten there, hasn't really felt settled, and also lost his spot in the team to Jordan Sweet. It was kind of weird that I thought Port Adelaide recruited two Rucks this year. I thought they'd be competing. Sure enough, it hasn't panned out. 
I thought Ivan Soldo had some good games this year, just played the eight and hasn't played since round 14. So naturally, if he's unsettled and not getting a game, he wants to go back to Victoria. Now, it has not been formally requested that he gets to St. Kilda. However, according to Toomey, St. Kilda are probably the leading contender at this point, and they see him as a potential partner for Rowan Marshall. Seems to be a bit bubbling away a little bit at St. Kilda, which is potentially exciting for their fans. Um, you know, we'll, we'll wait and see what happens with the Josh Battle compensation. That could be a pick in the top 10. It, it might be pick 21 or something like that. We don't know yet, but past that, we know they've had a dip at some players. Not necessarily high-profile players, but uh, there was a suggestion on the Tradies podcast that Brad Crouch, for instance, is not getting a contract. Uh, Seb Ross as well. Jack McRae has requested a trade to St. Kilda. They've, they've had a crack at Pete Ling. They were more or less in the Houston race. Uh, there's Yvonne Soldo. So a little bit happening at St. Kilda. Is there a watch this space? We don't know too much just yet. We had another formal trade request, this time from Wade Dirks, and he hasn't played a game. I did mention him in my last trade update, and I think I just said that Melbourne were the most likely or the most interested in him. Now, we just have a formal trade up uh, trade request. The Wade Dirksen wants to go to play for Melbourne. He's a 194 centimeter key position player. I think he's played a little bit forward, a little bit back. Melbourne do have a need for um, some key position depth, and he's cheap. I imagine this gets done fairly quickly during the trade week, but that is now formalized at least. A couple to go here. We got one on Brandon Farfit. Now, he's just been delisted. There is no trade suggestion here. How I do think he might be one that could find his way to a new club in season 2025. Some mature depth, an interesting one. You know, given Geelong's list profile, I thought at one point he might have loomed as an important piece of the puzzle. But I suppose Buddy Smith coming in, you know, Jack Bowes they traded in, Jar Clark, Tanner Braun. He has also flown away a little bit as a footballer. However, I would not be surprised to see a couple of clubs. And the ones I'm really thinking of are probably Richmond and West Coast. Someone who can come in as a mature on-ball rotation and help protect some of the younger bodies playing in both of those midfields, I wouldn't be surprised. I might actually do a video pretty soon about some like low-key, low-cost uh, trade targets that clubs could look at this offseason. And I want to finish this video with a, a point on Jack Darling. Jack Darling has also formally requested a trade to North Melbourne, and it's expected to go for about pick 64. So as a West Coast fan, I think this does make sense. Um, you know, he was contracted for another year. Um, you know, personally, I think West Coast, the one area they're not deficient in right now is young, tall forwards. And while he's experienced and, you know, uh, number two or number three all-time goal kicker, the list position West Coast are in right now would suggest they probably would prefer to give that spot to a Jack Williams, an Archer Reid, a Ryan Marrick. And there is still plenty of experience left at West Coast. So what does it give North Melbourne? I kind of just see it as a bit of a low-risk, low-reward move. I mean, I think the motivations for getting a Jack Darling and of course, a Luke Parker is experience. Um, you know, Jay from the Centre Bounce told me that Jack Darling has apparently kicked more goals than North Melbourne's entire list. So, you know, from that point of view, it, it makes sense, I suppose. You know, he's a great trainer. There's been, a lot of this has been said. North Melbourne not only lack experience, but they probably also lack a locked in forward who can be a genuine foil for Nick Larkey. Now, Jack Darling is about the fourth tall forward in our forward line, whereas he probably form a bit more of a central part of that North Melbourne forward mix and what Jack Darling probably can do that he did do at West Coast that perhaps gets a little bit underappreciated and we may see the difference in our team next year is despite the fact that his output has massively declined and he's going about a goal a game one thing he does do is still attract an opposition lockdown defender he's a very contested one-on-one -on -one kind of key forward particularly as his career has gotten on so while he wasn't making a huge impact for West Coast I do wonder if we'll feel that effect feel that loss where there's a little bit more attention comparatively to Alan Waterman and Jack Williams. So to flip that logic, that is something that North Melbourne could get. Even though Jack Darling hasn't been a prolific goal kicker for a number of years now, he will perhaps at least take some attention from Nick Larkey and probably be good enough to kick two or three goals in a day when Nick Larkey's not getting anywhere near it. So honestly, I do think there's a realistic prospect that Jack Darling comes in and the, the experiment fails and North Melbourne don't really need him in their forward line going forward. Um, what is the risk there? Not a whole lot for North Melbourne. He could still be a VFL leader for them, worst case scenario. They'll probably trade a pick they might not even use to acquire him and they're probably not tight on salary cap either. So it's a little bit of a low risk, low reward move, but hopefully it works out best for all parties. And I could see perhaps a psychological shift in Jack where he's really motivated to make the most of his opportunity and see out the rest of his career at North Melbourne 
that is still possible. I think there's a good player buried within. Um, perhaps we'll see it at North Melbourne. But anyway, guys, that is all I got for you in this trade update. Let me know in the comments what you think. Let me know if there's anything I missed. This is going to get increasingly hard to get every story out there, but I wouldn't be surprised if I wake up to new rumors tomorrow and I'll do another video for you. So let me know in the comments. But for now, I'll say goodbye. I'll thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.